Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. I wanted to show you these watches. I actually have shown you these already in previous videos. These are variations on the DW291H heavy-duty watches from Casio. So they're not quite G-Shock watches, but they're tough and they're feature-packed, and I like them. And last year, about this time, I bought these two, and... Uh, then then I kind of dragged my feet on buying the third one until this year I decided, you know what, there are only three versions available. I should get the third one. So there it is. This one here was more widely available, easy to find at like Walmart stores. And this one I found at a few Walmart stores. And this one I could only find, this one with all the red on it, I could only find it online. And the prices last year were somewhere between $25 and $30. If you'd shopped carefully, you'd get closer to $25. But if you went it just into your local Walmart store, about $30 for, uh, well, these two watches. I didn't see this one actually at a Walmart store. So anyway, but this year, about a year later, the price has gone up. I found this at a local Walmart store just a few days ago for $32, $31.92. So yeah, the prices have gone up a little bit. That's the state of our economy in the world, I'm afraid. And online, um, I found this for somewhere between $32 and $35. It's just in a general quick search. So anyway, if you're interested in any of these colors, you know, take a look, get out there before the prices go up again. You might still, this is not as, as common as it was a year ago at uh, my local Walmart stores, but I did find this, um, you know, in person at a store just this week. So I've already done in-depth reviews on these watches, but let's go over the basic information about this watch anyway. Right, right there where it looks like it says zoom, that actually means 200 meters. So it's a 200 meter water resistant watch. And that's great. Uh, again, heavy duty, so somewhat shock resistant, maybe not as good as a G-Shock. I like these big buttons that are very easy to press to go around to the different modes. And uh, yeah, it's got this right here. You can see on the display, this is an analog, uh, analog clock right there that always shows the local time. So no matter if you've gone into these different modes, everything you're doing with this watch, it's still going to show the local time right there. And it's a little bit small. So if you got really good eyes, you can see that it's an hour, minute and a little second indicator there in analog as you're going through all the different modes. And let's go through those modes. First of all, you've got your main timekeeping mode right there. And as you can see, hours, minutes, seconds in either a 12 hour or 24 hour display. There's your day of the week and uh, month and date. This is all wrong. I need to <laughs> I need to set this and I'll show you that in a moment. And then a little bit of animation right there. Every 10 seconds, you get a series of little, just little bars that appear and disappear. So that's kind of nice. And as you change modes, maybe you'll see a little bit of extra animation as I go through to the next mode. See, so oh, that's cute. So this is the world time mode where, uh, you know, you can set that to whatever, whatever time zone you want. It'll show you the date and the time there. Then your uh, alarms your countdown timer, and that can be anywhere from one second all the way up to a true 24 hour countdown timer. And here's your stopwatch, which is a 24 hour stopwatch. It'll, it'll go for 24 hours. And if you don't stop it already, it, it'll keep going. And it'll, so at the 24 hour mark, it will uh, reset to zero and just keep on going uh, unless you stop it. And now we're back there. Now, I need to set this anyway, because uh, I haven't really set this since I got it from the store. Oh, I set the minutes and seconds to synchronize with these other watches, but it's in the wrong time zone. So uh, let's get this going right now. And the date is wrong and everything. So from here, I will press and hold this adjust button until things start to blink. And there, okay, I can change the seconds. I'm going to press the mode button. I can say whether daylight saving time is on or off. I can tell it which time zone I'm in. And I'm not really in the New York City time zone. I'm in the Denver time zone or the mountain time zone. So these buttons here, when you change the time zone, if I press this one down here, it's as though I'm going eastward on the map. So the time goes forward as I keep pressing that button. But if I press this upper button, it's as though I'm going westward on the map. And I can take it back here to what it says, Denver. But for me, it's the mountain time zone. I'm in Utah. And that's the correct time now for that, but it's not the correct date. So I'll press mode. Okay, hours, that, that's good, that's correct. Uh, minutes, that's correct. Uh, I'll leave it on 12 hour mode, but you know, I could go to 24 and it doesn't really affect it right now because 
it's AM anyway. Uh, okay, and here, now I need to set this to the right date. Okay, we are in 2022 as I'm recording this. And I can go forward or backward with these buttons there. Uh, the month is December as I'm doing this. And it's December 1st today. So, oh, there we go. All right, and, the, and oh, here is another setting I can do. The backlight, there's a button up here for the backlight. And you can have that stay on for one and a half seconds or for three seconds. A lot of people opt for the shorter duration because uh, you know they're concerned about running the battery down too much, but this is a 10 year battery. So I'm not gonna worry about running the battery down too much. I'm gonna leave it on that longer duration, three seconds. And there, I'm back to the beginning, so there are all the settings that I can uh, do from that main mode here and I'll press the adjust button to make things stop blinking. Now from here, you might think we're done with our main timekeeping mode, but oh no, if I push this bottom button here that's marked search, I get another time zone right here. So, you know, it started out, it was, it was New, New York, London, Paris, Berlin, Munich, no, Berlin. And, um, then I changed it to Denver. But if I want to, I can choose some other time zone to be quickly accessible here uh, as my number two time zone. So again, if I if I push the button here to make that blink, and let's say I'm going to make that New York instead of London, and uh, if I push the mode button again, I can say say you know that's with or without daylight saving time for New York. So that's how I choose that, and I'll push that to stop blinking, and then I'll push the search button again. I can adjust those other two time zones as I please, and it will all uh, line up based on whatever my home time zone was, it'll, it'll pick the correct offset for those different cities and the time zones associated with those cities. So if I were to leave it on New York here, see, now I get the New York time zone there, I still have my local uh, number one time zone here in that analog display. And if I then scroll through the modes and come back to my home timekeeping mode, then it's going to default back to that Denver time zone, the number one time zone that I've selected there. So that's kind of nice. You can just quickly access uh, these three other time zones in addition to your, your normal home time zone. But if you want to leave it sitting on some other time zone kind of indefinitely, you go to the world time mode. And right now it's set for London, or that would be like UTC right now. So I could just leave it like that again with my home time zone up there. Okay, next mode is my alarm mode. And so for this, it's kind of fun. There are actually, there are five alarms. So if I push this button down here on the uh, right side, I can see what those five alarms are set for. Obviously, I haven't set them yet. So let's just set one right now. Press and hold the adjust button. And I'm going to set that for, oh, let's get up bright and early at 6 a.m. And I'll push the button to make things stop blinking. Right there, you can see it says alarm one on. My choices here are the alarm to come on one time. Okay, so tomorrow morning at six o'clock, it's going to sound the alarm and then it's going to put it in standby mode so it'll be off. Or push this adjust button when things aren't uh, blinking, push the adjust button to leave it on all the time. So every day it's going to go at six o'clock or it's going to be off. It's not going to go any days or just that one time. So you have that option on all five of those alarms a one time only, every day or off. My next mode from here is my countdown timer. So if I push and hold this adjust button, uh, I can reset that. And let's see if I hold it again. All right, now it starts to blink. And I can set that to some other number of hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay. And then I can start that countdown. Hours, minutes, seconds, and 10th of a second uh, countdown. Stop that and push this to reset it to whatever I had it on or push and hold that to change the duration for the next time I want to run that. So that's kind of nice. Okay, my next mode here is the stopwatch. And this is uh, all pretty straightforward. Use this bottom right button to start and stop that stopwatch. Use the adjust button up here to do your split time or when the stopwatch is stopped to reset it to zero again. So very similar to what you would find on uh, other Casio watches and a lot of digital watches, just to be sure that you know the start and stop is down here and the split time and reset are up here. And now I'm back to my normal home timekeeping mode.
Let's do a quick weigh in on this watch uh, on my kitchen scale, about 64, 65 grams there. Compare that to something like this G-Shock Bluetooth Square. Ooh. And that comes at 53 grams. So a little heavier, a little more heavy duty looking there, just 10 grams heavier, but still a very comfortable watch. I've really enjoyed uh, the way the other ones felt. This one's brand new. So, you know, it's got, this is a pretty, pretty solid, pretty sturdy watch band here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be hesitant about, you know, how well that thing is going to hold up. And uh, this is how it looks on my wrist. So, you know, not, not bad at all. I have about a seven and a half inch wrist. So even, even there, you know, I've got plenty of extra strap there and I could even make it smaller if I needed to. So that's a pretty good fit. I'm, yeah, I just really like this. Here's a little indication of what the backlight looks like there. It looks like it's got a couple of LEDs in the bottom corners of the display. Uh, nice amber glow and it shows up pretty well at night. Uh, again, just coming on for just, you know, one and a half or three seconds. And I think that looks pretty good. I like it. One thing I often neglect to mention in my watch videos, there's usually an alarm demonstration you can do. So if I go to the alarm mode on this one, uh, let's see, so alarm here. This is the button I use to go from one alarm setting to the other, right? But if I were to just press and hold this for just a couple seconds, See, it just gives you a, a little demonstration of what the alarm will sound like when you go. Also, I, I guess I neglected to show here the hourly signal, so I can turn that on or off just using the button there, you know, so it'll beep a couple of times at the top of each hour. Another thing is when I'm back in the regular timekeeping mode here, if I were to press and hold again this bottom right button from here, it takes it to kind of a demo mode. And so what this does in this mode is it scrolls through these four different time zones that you've selected for your, for your main time zones there. It just kind of goes from one to the next to the next. And so, you know, not something I often use, but I should at least mention that that's available there to you if you like to see those other time zones just scrolling, scrolling by, you know, every couple of seconds while your local time is up there. So if you're going to get this watch for somewhere between, say, $32 and $35, some people say it's a great alternative to a G-Shock because it's heavy duty, it just feels nice, it's packed full of features. Uh, only thing I would say is, uh, obviously, a G-Shock is going to have a little bit more built-in protection inside the case, and also the crystal is a little bit exposed here because it's just flat right up against the front of the watch. So, you know, if you have a tendency to scrape your watch against things, this crystal could be a little bit vulnerable. It's a mineral crystal and it's pretty good, but just, just keep an eye on that. And it, otherwise, I would say, yeah, it is probably a pretty good alternative to a G-Shock. Now, I tend to really like my G-Shocks that have like, you know, Bluetooth and or, um, you know, atomic timekeeping built in and or uh, tough solar, so they charge themselves up. But, uh, you know, if, if you can't have those features, You've got some great alternatives here, like a 10-year battery. So that's a pretty good alternative to having having this charge with light every day. And of course, it's got that 200 meter water resistance. So that's pretty good there too. So an alternative to a G-Shock, 10-year battery, 200 meter water resistance. I, I think you're at five alarms and it's just, it's just a really fun watch. So I'm glad to have now the full set, all three, you know, we call them the three amigos or the three stooges. I don't know which one they... <laughs> They are, <laughs> but I, I enjoy having all three of these and depending on my mood, uh, I think they all look, I, I like the way they look. So I enjoy wearing these uh, in, in my regular rotation of all the watches I have. And that's all I wanted to tell you right now, but I have more videos in the works. So I hope you will join me again soon for more episodes of The Good Timekeeping Show.